My name is Richard Davis, and my job title is a cabinet maker. A cabinet maker makes furniture from drawings that um, architects give you or interior designers. It can be architectural features as well, um, doors, and basically things out of wood, really. I have to travel about 30 miles to get here, and I do that because of the interesting work that we have as well. It's more bespoke, it's not run-of-the-mill things that I was used to in my previous jobs. They deal more with furniture and nicer things, the nicer arts of woodwork. My mum always used to say that I, I said I wanted to be a fixer man. That's, how, that's what I used to say, I want to be a fixer man. I was really into hi-fi when I was at school and I wanted to work in a hi-fi shop, but um, my academic skills weren't brilliant, you know. So I thought, well, what else can I do? And my careers advisor says, what else do you want to do? And I says, well, um, I like woodwork. So she got me a job in, in woodwork and it was, a company that majored more in wood machining, you know, so you, you machine the parts for the cabinet maker to construct. I was kind of bored at that place, so I asked them if they'd send me to college, you know, just to get out for a day of release. So I went to college and, and I got my wood machining qualifications. And I wasn't really fulfilled doing it as such because it wasn't, I knew I could do more, see, I knew I could make things. It's here that I've actually become a cabinet maker. And that's like after like how many years of doing machining? I saw the job advertised and I thought, well, I'll go for it. And all they can say is that, no, we don't want you. So I went for it, I bought all the things I've made, put it all out on the car park. <laughs> and Ian, who was the works manager, he was looking at it all and says, oh, yeah, yeah, we will have you. <laughs> and so I, I got in. I was nervous because um, I knew there are certain ways of doing things. And I thought, well, I'm going to do something another way and probably like embarrass myself. You know, I'd never use a biscuit jointer, so I had to say, I don't know how to use that. And you're thinking, oh, they're gonna think I'm an idiot because I don't know how to use a biscuit jointer. But anyway, I got over that. I used to do craft fairs, see? I had a notion that I could have been self-employed, I suppose. <laughs> um, it, it, was, it was good for a while. I made quite a bit of money out of it, you know. I did the first one at the NEC. This lady came along really posh, and uh, I like that chair, and she's talking to her friend. And she says, uh, that would look nice in my lounge, wouldn't it? And I'm thinking, yeah, buy it, buy it. I think I'll buy that chair. She wrote out the deposit for it straight away. And I delivered it and she gave me the cash for it. And that was brilliant. That covered my costs and everything. But it wasn't enough for me to, I didn't think it was enough for me to go self-employed totally. I, I go to a church, like, you know, when I'm not at work and I'd always wanted to play the bass. My missus, my wife, she bought me a, a guitar for my birthday. And I thought, well, I've got to try it now. So I practiced, practiced, recorded all the songs. And at home, I practiced all the songs. And then I, um, I became one of the bass players in the band. And so I thought, well, I'll make my own guitar. And this is a guitar that I'd made. This is an ebony fretboard here. The, the two leaves here are overlaid in ash. And you've got ebony stripes there. This neck here is maple. And you've got purple heart laminations going down it as well and then the cores, Brazilian mahogany, and that all adds to the sound of the instrument as well. In the future, I think I'd like to have a shop. I think I'd just make guitars and chairs and whatever people wanted and whatever my imagination, you know, would allow me to make. The money's not brilliant here. But it's all right, it's all right, you, you can make a living, you know. It's the enjoyment of what you do. You go home and you're happy and feel like you've done something and it's your life's purpose sort of thing to do what you were made to do, so that's what I do. <laughs> I just trust in God, I pray about it, and then just go for it, and it works out. And if it doesn't, then no hard, hardship, you know. There's always something else.